Here we are, pitch class set theory. So, um, all of these notes are taken from a book by David Cope, I think it's David Cope, called Techniques of the Contemporary Composer. Um, so I've just done a few short notes on it and trying to explain it as well. So, uh, set theory was put forward originally as a method of identifying pitch qualities of atonal, 12-tone and highly chromatic music that defied traditional analysis. So Stravinsky, Schoenberg, Milton Babbitt, uh, Bartok even, um, and Alan Fort, uh, it's aptly named for a musician, isn't it, uh, developed a methodical approach to identifying all available combinations of pitch collections from just two notes uh, up to a ten-note cell. Uh, there we go, <laughs> in his structure of atonal music. Um, so he created a list of these pitches, um, and it's somewhat arbitrary in the sense that, you know, he decided um, where in the order things would be. So there's a little bit of arbitrariness in this, but it's just a list of notes uh, with numbers assigned to those notes. So we can find them on uh, Wikipedia, this list of pitch class sets here. We'll have the complete list of all of them. I've also included the original list, um, which I think is 200 and something or other, um, in here, which gets rid of all these sort of um, B versions of things. Um, so you'll see things like 416, 418, 419, chords that we've been talking about before, but it won't give you any information on them. Um, so I would probably still stick with these things because they do give you um, interesting um, links to possible spacings of, of what they are. Um, so let's sort of go back a bit. So here, um, how are they named? Well, the first column uh, tells you how many notes are in the set. So, uh, you know, the first column here is uh, zero. There are no notes. It's an empty set. There's one note in the set. Great. Um, there are two note sets, three note sets, four, five, eight, etc. Lots and lots of different um, collections of pitches. The second number um, tells you uh, where it is in the set's sequence in Fort's ordering of all pitch class sets. So it's his decision where he puts notes. Often, though, um, we'll see that the way it's structured is he will try and put the smallest possible distance between any two, you know, any two notes. So starting at O1 is is better than starting at O2. That's why 2 1 set 2 1 is before set 2 2 because there's more distance between the 0 uh, and the 2 etc. So he'll he'll use that methodology throughout. What do those numbers mean 0 and stuff? Well, let me tell you. Um so since there are 12 different notes on a chromatic scale, each note is assigned a number. So 0 is C, uh, t uh 1 is D flat. 2 is D, 3 is E flat, E, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Uh, up to the uh, all available notes. Sometimes uh, 10 and 11 um, are abbreviated to T uh, and E for 11 as well. Um, so you will also see those letters there uh, just to avoid confusion. That's why they've got little commas between those notes. Uh, so in here when it's called prime form in the square brackets, we've got the actual pitches of notes that everything uh, reduces to, and more on that later. What on earth does that mean, reduces to? We'll find out. So um, we've got 12 different notes. We've got numbers assigned to the uh, names of the pitches, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, there are 208 pitch class sets, apparently. <laughs> uh, the names derive the number of pitches in the set, then a dash, and then the number in the series. So just to reiterate, the first number to the left indicates the number of notes, and the second number indicates where in the sequence in Fort's ordering those notes are. So the next thing to do is to work out, so we've done this bit here, set three, three. Uh, so there are three note sets, and it comes third in Fort's ordering. Zero, one, four, zero, one, two, three, four, are those notes. Uh, so now what we've got to work out is what does this mean? One zero one one zero zero. So this is called uh, interval class vector, which is a very silly name 
for basically how many minor seconds, how many major seconds, how many minor thirds, how many major thirds, perfect fourths and augmented fourths there are in that set. So it's it, you don't read it um, as a, a, a sort of binary thing. It's actually a column. Um, so there are columns. So the first column indicates how many minor seconds there are on the set. The second column indicates how many major seconds there are on the set. Third column, minor thirds. Fourth column, major thirds. Fifth column, perfect fourth. And the final column is augmented fourths. So in set 3-3, three, three, uh, we've got one minor second. Yep, zero, one. That makes sense. We've got no major seconds at all. That's also correct. We've got one minor third. Yep. Oh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, that would be the distance between one and four is a minor third. And then we've also got one major third. That's the distance between zero and four. That's also a major third. So that's correct. There are no fourths uh, at all uh, in that set. And you can see from here that, of course, it gets rather complicated pretty quickly when we get up to, uh, you know, seven uh, series of seven notes, for example, where there's five minor seconds, four major seconds, three minor thirds, three major thirds, four perfect fourths, and two augmented fourths as well. So all intervals beyond an augmented fourth are just inversions of each other. So that becomes a diminished fifth, sixths, sevenths, exactly the same as a second, uh, and so on. So that's why there are only those. Um, and it's just to save space, I think, just the names uh, minor second, major second. But it is a bit confusing when you first look at it and you think, what on earth does that mean? Um, so uh, in most cases, different sets have different vectors. So the same interval, uh, sorry, so different interval content. But some sets have the same interval content or the same vector. And those are said to be in a, a, a Z relationship, which oddly means no special relationship, although there is a special relationship because they share uh, the same interval vector. Um, so you, you have to sort of search for where they are, which is a bit annoying. So if you if you come across a, a Z number, so let's go up to 6Z19, because that's one that we've seen, uh, there'll be something with exactly the same vector here, 313431. Uh, somewhere else, usually, whoops, uh, in another six-note cell uh, as well. Uh, so I think that it accounts to this, uh, 313431. Let's just have a look. 313431, 313431. So the, uh, there, there's a Z relationship because they, turn, they, they contain the same uh, quality of intervals and the same quantity of intervals, um, but they're just slightly different uh, orderings of pitches. So in this one, we've got this uh, Schoenberg hexachord here. And in this one, it's just, it seems we're a rather more simplistic um, chord structure. So 0 on 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's almost octatonic, 0, 1, 3, 4, 7, 8. If I now go to the Schoenberg hexachord, Let's see whether that's whether orally it's identifiable. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hmm, there's something about that, but it's quite hard to spot. And and what's interesting is that it shows that there is a relationship between these two sets, not necessarily orally, but actually in in when you do a deep analysis of it, that they, they share the same sort of interval content, which is really really weird. Uh, interval content is the same as vector. Um, so you can click on Schoenberg hexachord and find out all about it. Um, so uh, there we go. That's what a Z relationship is. So that's where uh, you see those letter Zs. So the next thing, which is really important, is the basis of reduction and prime form. Uh, so the basis of pitch class set analysis is to find out whether seemingly different pitch collections share similar traits. They might even be the same chord. Sets have many levels of reduction. The chart only contains sets that are fully reduced. Okay, well, what does that mean? Well, by analysing pitches in a piece of music, we can work out whether sets share the same interval content, so they share the same vector, or are subsets of each other, for example. Um, perhaps they might even be the same set, and we just didn't realise because they're just transposed to different notes. Or are they similar? Is there one note changed? Is there something which adds a, a note into it? So analysis means removing all redundant notes, 
so that all sets begin with zero. So let's say you had eight, four, three, two. That eight, you would have to start on zero. And then you reduce all of these things. So prime forms are fully reduced sets. Ensure that the set occurs with the least distance between any element of the set. In other words, you don't have any gaps. So it's always the smallest possible space between any two notes. Uh, and if you look at the pitch class sets here, that tends to be the case that 01236 is a smaller distance than 01237 is. So all of these have to be reduced, uh, and they get reduced by uh, a rotation system, which is now obsolete, thank goodness, because we can just use a calculator uh, on a web calculator to, to, to do all of this for us. So uh, reducing some groups of notes uh, often required a form of pitch rotation, where one would successfully uh, transfer the leftmost number to the right and adding 12, and then you subtract it so that everything starts with zero. But sometimes that didn't work and you had to keep doing it and keep doing it. Thankfully, there's this, uh, which means I can just put it any set. Let's do that one. But, um, and then submit it and it will give my fourth name, which is 4-3, um, which is fabulous. Um, so it even tells me what the interval class is. Um, so there are two minor seconds, one major second, two minor thirds, one major third. And now I can also look at the fort name 4-3 um, and go back to this uh, list of pitch class sets and look at 4-3. Where's 4-3? Here we go. 0134. That's exactly what it was. 0134. So it reduces to that prime form. So it will always give you the prime form of where something is, which is excellent. So the normal form will be what it appears as. So let's let's try something else just random uh, things. So I've got 2, 3, 6, 11. So we'll see here, that's the normal form, 11, 2, 3, 6, whatever it is. It reduces to a prime form, which goes 0, 3, 4, 7. And that is set 4, 17. Isn't that remarkable? Um, so going to set 4, 17, it would all reduce to an alpha chord. Um so, uh, yeah, it's a sort of strange one. So prime form 0347, 0347. Oh, that makes absolute sense. It's a major minor chord, which is the alpha chord. So perfect. That, that works really, really well. Okay. So then the very last thing um, is to do with K relations. And really, this is just an appendix. You don't need to know any of this at all. So K relation is when a set occurs as a subset of another set, or its complement, let's just change that before I send it to you, uh, it is said to be in K relation to that set, e.g. set 3-1 occurs as a subset of 8-8 eight, eight, and is in K relation to set 8-8, eight, eight, even if 8-8 eight, eight doesn't actually occur uh, in the piece. Sets that are subsets of another set and its complement are said to be in KH relation. Who cares? I mean, it doesn't really matter. The only thing to bear in mind is that a complement of a set are all the pitch classes that are not in the set. So set 48 has 0156. So the set that doesn't have those is set 88, at least in a normal form. Uh, and then it gets reduced, etc. And then it will start with zero. But um, so you do get complement sets as well. Um, but, you know, Williams just doesn't use those at all, really. Um, but what you do find is that it enables me to go into sort of quite atonal language and find connections without this method. It would be very, very difficult indeed, and very laborious process to try and work out what similar chords there were um, simply by um, trying to use my ear or intervals, count intervals, which would just be extremely challenging. So I think the reason why pitch class set theory works quite well with Williams is that we can identify certain chords that are used continuously throughout his um, opus. Um, and then apply them in our own work or in pastiche work. Uh, so it means that we can use similar chords with similar functions and do the same thing. Um, I think that's about it, really. But if you have any questions, then let me know and I'll do another video for you. Um, so that's it. And uh, yeah, good luck. And I'll see you soon.